What makes a gaming masterpiece? A very simple question with a very complicated answer. And over the past 10 years, there have been many games that could be considered to be gaming masterpieces. However, there has always been one game that has stood out from the crowd for challenging the status quo. A game developed by one man. And I am of course speaking about... Minecraft. Minecraft has had one of the most complicated histories that gaming has ever seen. This was due to the fact that for a solid three years it was dead. However, the game saw a mass resurgence in 2019, but more prevalently in 2020. This, of course, is thanks to SMP Live and... <sighs> The Dream SMP. Both the game and the community were thriving, and everything seemed to be going just fine. That was until 2023, where now most of the game's biggest creators have dropped the game, and the community is now shattered into factions, and the developers have been demonized, and the game is yet again facing an inescapable death. But why? What's happened in the last three years that's led to the death of Minecraft? Well, let's talk about it. But just before we do, I would just like to ask that if you are enjoying this video, then please do hit the subscribe button as it really helps me to keep posting these videos. And if you hit the bell, then you'll be notified when more videos just like this one are posted. Anyway, thank you and let's get back to the video. Before we get into why Minecraft is dying, I feel it's important to quickly talk about how it came back from death in the first place. Okay, so in 2019, Minecraft began having a resurgence with SMP Live, which featured many big creators such as Call Me Carson, Jay Schlatt, Pokimane, and Fitz, and many more. And essentially, they would stream for multiple hours a day just having fun with their friends and enjoying the simple nature of Minecraft. Then, of course, in 2020, we had <sighs> Dream and the Dream SMP. Now, I'm sure I don't need to tell you all who Dream is and what the Dream SMP is because pretty much everyone has heard about it by now. But basically, Dream's primarily skill-based Minecraft content brought a new type of audience to the game and inspired a new type of content. And of course, the Dream SMP saw the massive rise of story-based content farms, I mean servers, to the platform. So if content was on the rise and people were returning to the game after many years, then what happened? And there is not one single reason for the death of Minecraft, but instead a lot of smaller things that built up to the climax in 2023, with one of the biggest issues being the game itself. So let's talk about it. Now, developers adding more features to a game over a period of time is perfectly normal. I mean, hell, it's the literal point of development. So you may be wondering, well, what's the issue here then? And on the surface, it doesn't seem like there is one. But the issue comes when you realize that over time, the game has moved from the main philosophy that made Minecraft so popular and unique in the first place. That being, of course, the game's simplicity. Minecraft was one of the only games in the past 10 years that was so simple, but yet so complex. The game was easy to pick up for anyone whether or not they'd played a video game in their life, because the gameplay loop and mechanics were so simple and the game was rather intuitive. And that was the beauty of Minecraft. But now the game has too much content that just overcomplicates a game notoriously known for just being simple. And over time, the content of the game has become more about quantity instead of the quality of the features that are being added. If there were more features that had a higher level of quality, this wouldn't be an issue. But unfortunately, it's the exact opposite. Microsoft are just adding features to the game simply just to expand the amount of content in it. And they really aren't thinking about how these things will complicate the gameplay. Or, you know, how these things are even going to mechanically work. Which is an issue I'll be coming back to later, don't worry. The best example of this, of course, is the netherite upgrade template that was added in 1.20. The only reason for this existing in the game is literally just so it takes more time to get netherite armor or tools. This is a completely just artificial way of extending gameplay time, and it's safe to say it doesn't work. Because instead of it feeling like a natural progression of the tech tree, it is ridiculously, unnecessarily tedious and just downright annoying. And I get it, it's a way of getting the player to explore more of the nether so that new content in there has a purpose, which is a fantastic idea. But because of how these biomes are generated, the time it takes to find a bastion is already way too long, and then there's the whole thing that the template might not even be in the chest. So you've wasted your fucking time. Plus, you still have to find ancient debris, have a full set of diamond armor or tools, and then you need to find more diamonds to build a goddamn template. It takes so much time to do this, and it really isn't all that worth it compared to the time you invest into getting armor and tools. It's a complete fucking slap in the face. And this rabbit hole goes so, so deep. So to avoid this video being three hours long, I will keep the rest of the points around this topic rather 
rather brief. The game has too many features that are rather quite worthless, such as the sniffer, alley, and the goddamn glow squid. And as previously mentioned, we'll be coming back to these guys later. Then the developers keep adding new mobs, but not thinking about how to make them, well, you know, useful. And then there's the whole issue of them making new features, such as the elytra, that just make pre-existing features useless as well. Because what is the point in spending time getting a horse when you can just wait a bit to get an elytra? It makes no sense to allocate time into getting a good horse anymore when that time can just be invested to getting to the end city. But now it's time we speak about the elephant in the room, and that is of course Microsoft. In 2014, the corporate monstrosity that is Microsoft had an opportunity to buy Minecraft from Notch after he wanted to sell his shares. So of course, Microsoft being Microsoft, they jumped on the opportunity to ruin everything I know and love. And when the purchase had already went through, people were already thinking that this will lead to the decline of Minecraft. And a good few layers on, I can definitely say that, well, they were right. Since the Microsoft buyout, the Minecraft community and Microsoft have been thrown into a war that has ultimately led in the community being divided into factions. And there has been civil war between the player community themselves, which is one of the funniest things I have ever fucking heard. Tensions began to rise between the company and the players ever since the incredibly controversial 1.9 combat update, which made PvP and Minecraft incredibly annoying and pretty tedious, just like everything else that Microsoft has added to this game. The appeal of the 1.8 combat system was the fast-paced and tactical nature, but Microsoft has completely demolished that in favour of a weapon charge-up mirror. However, do remember this, because the impact of this is something that we'll be evaluating a tiny a bit later on. One of the more recent controversial features that Microsoft has added into the game is of course the chat report system. Essentially the reason for the drama around this feature was that if you received a certain amount of reports, your account would be permanently banned from online play. And obviously the reason that this was so controversial, besides the fact it can easily be exploited, was that it showed that Microsoft were prioritizing the children who played the game instead of the older player base. This is most obvious in the profanity chat reports, but the biggest contribution that Microsoft has had to the death of Minecraft is the countless amounts of features that were promised for 1.17 but then have been split over multiple different major game updates, just to give the illusion that the updates actually have more substance than they actually do. Most major updates now just consist of bug fixes rather than actual meaningful content. Speaking of content, let's speak about Minecraft content on YouTube and how it's led to a rapid declining interest in the game. In 2020, the Minecraft content scene was booming. It was amazing. There were so many incredibly unique ideas flowing around the platform, but all good things must come to an end. And now all the content around the game is just 100 day challenges, how I took over XSMP, and just boring scripted shit, to be honest. There has been a major shift from focusing on the dynamics of the people playing the game and making jokes around what's happening in the game to mechanical skill-based content, simply because that's what's performing better on the platform. The content space surrounding Minecraft has gone stale, and many of the biggest creators in the scene have dropped the game in sights of bigger and better opportunities, such as Tommy in it. Side note, the game isn't that much of a shit state that Tommy has moved to fucking Roblox. That's when you know that this game is dead, because Roblox fucking sucks. It genuinely feels like content for Minecraft has just run out of possibilities. People are getting bored, and the fact that the game is becoming more boring really doesn't help. The death of original Minecraft content has ultimately been one of the most damaging things for the game. Without media attention, any game would begin to fizzle out. But this death of original content is one thing, however there has been a resurgence of another type of content, that being quote unquote kids videos in Minecraft. If you've been on YouTube from around the times of 2013 onwards, you probably would have heard of Elsagate. For those of you who haven't, it was essentially really creepy quote unquote kids content that's just kind of disgusting and slightly horrifying. Slightly, maybe, a tiny bit of an understatement though. And Minecraft started getting their own version of this a couple of years ago during the dead phase of the game, but after Minecraft started picking back up again, it kind of fizzled out. But as of 2023 and 2024, this type of content has started to creep back up again, and it is starting to get really quite concerning. But genuinely, that type of content could be an entirely different video in of itself, because of how deep that shit goes. So I'm not really going to touch on it any more than that, there's plenty of videos that do if you want to go and see that, but caution, it's fucking weird. But how can we talk about Minecraft content without talking about Minecraft servers? 
Minecraft servers have always been an incredible source of entertainment in the game, simply because it transcends the possibilities of the single player experience and brings it so you can have fun with your friends in different game modes. With the introduction of spigot and paper, the possibilities of what could happen in Minecraft were truly elevated, and these tools allowed for the development of the largest Minecraft server in the world, Hypixel. I don't think I can name a single server that doesn't use spigot or paper, especially minigame servers, because you can't exactly have many games without the plugins. But over the last few years, servers have got really stale, specifically minigame servers. This is due to a number of things, one of them being lack of innovation. Server owners now are trying to focus on just replicating what's already been a success just simply for monetary gain and it's really upsetting. Everywhere you look around the Minecraft space, there has been a death of creativity and innovation. And this has become a lot more apparent, especially with the fact that most minigame servers still use 1.8 combat, and they won't upgrade to the newer versions because then they lose the combat system. However, this comes at the cost of limiting the possibilities for the game modes, because without the new content, there is only a certain number of game modes you can actually make. So Microsoft has really shot server owners in the foot with this, and multiple other things they've done, such as the previously mentioned chat report system, and cheating has also become like a very predominant part of these servers now, and I think it's because of how readily accessible these cheats are, Microsoft are trying to make an attempt to crack down on them, but it's pretty pointless. Because if you patch out one type of client, they'll just develop a new one. I mean, we've already got like Java clients, which just reprogram the game, and now we've got a newer introduction called JNI clients, which abuse the Java native interface to create cheats to put directly into the game through DLLs, the more traditional multiplayer hacking. And it's a topic I find very fascinating, so if you want to see a video on that, let me know down in the comments section below, because I'd actually be pretty interested in making one. But there is one last thing we need to talk about, and it's single-handedly killing Minecraft. Let's talk about the mob vote. The mob vote's been around since 2017. It was a way of getting more players to get involved with Minecon. However, it is now a symbol of everything that is wrong with Minecraft. And funnily enough, it's a representation of everything that we have just spoken about. The mob vote is a very controversial thing for the community as it's led to the division of it. There were multiple arguments and aggressive responses to people promoting the mob they wanted to win the vote, to the point that certain people were starting to receive death threats for their opinions, which yet again is still fun to me because it's a fucking block game, grow up. So TLDR, the mob vote became a symbol of pointless content that Microsoft were adding and it was just another way to rile up the fans. I mean, for God's sake, the fans literally had a revolution. This is where the mobs like the Glow Squid, Sniffer and Ally come in. This is because since they were added, they have become dead content. Genuinely, never find a use for these guys because they essentially do nothing. And a lot of the community felt angry that the decisions on the mobs that they wanted were pretty pointless because no matter what mob was chosen, they will be absolutely fucking pointless regardless of which one is added. The mob vote was the last straw for the community, and it caused Minecraft's popularity to take a nosedive. And with that, we have reached the end of this deep dive into how Minecraft, a gaming masterpiece, has come to a second tragic death. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, then maybe consider becoming a channel member. It only costs around $3 a month, and it actually goes a long way into helping me grow the channel, and it would actually help me make this whole YouTube thing a proper career for myself, so it would be really, really appreciated. But hey, if you don't want to pay, just hit subscribe. It's genuinely so valuable to me. And if you do decide to become a member, then you'll get exclusive member content when I start doing that, and a custom role in my Discord server, and many more perks, such as seeing videos early. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.